My name is Stacy McLaren. I am on staff here at New Life as an adult ministries and communications associate. I am also a uh, Pima County CASA, and a CASA is a court appointed special advocate. I was inspired to get involved with the CASA program actually many, many years ago, and it didn't come to fruition until I would say in the last couple of years. And I'll go back to one of our foster moms um, many years ago. She was somebody that just caused me to look at the foster care system a little bit differently and with a little more compassion. I had in my brain that people just know better, like you know better, you don't do harm to your children. You start looking at, oh my goodness, they've never had access to X, Y, and Z. They've never heard that they're valued. They've never heard that they're loved. Mom and dad have never heard that, much less little one. They've never heard that either. So what the CASA program is, is it is a program designed to give children in the foster care system an advocate just for them. There are many players in the foster care um, case plan for a child. There's the case manager, there's the attorney for mom, the attorney for dad, the attorney for child, the foster family or placement, kinship placement. But before CASA, there was no person just for the child. And in a case plan, um, children can have as many as three attorneys attorneys, as many as three to five case managers, and court benches change. The judges actually rotate through as well. So a CASA is the one person that will remain with that child from start to finish, because even foster families can change. And then your, your commitment is really an hour a month with your child, and I'm able to talk to all of their doctors, to all their counselors, to their teacher, all of the people involved the CASA gets to talk to. It's just phenomenal to see how they thrive and how they can change and how you can sway a judge with your own opinion. We keep our lives separate. My CASA kiddo doesn't know who my husband is. It is separate because my focus is for her alone. And there's just a sweetness in that because there's nothing else that has to be worried about. And so to see her start to stand a little taller and have a little more ownership in the things that we did and the things that we were doing that was affecting her life, it just like I saw her go from a very shy, insecure, holding a um, leg little girl to, boy, she she became a, a spitfire. God is in that. Whether I get to stay in her life from this point on or not, the seeds have been planted. And it's through words and it's through being seen, known, loved, and valued that she sees how God moves. And so I'm just praying. I'm praying for her life from here on out. Um, her case will probably be closed by the end of the year, and I will stay in it. Mikasa stays in it until the case closes. My husband and I talked about how is this going to impact our family. And I know that his concern was that I was going to become so emotionally invested that this was going to take a toll on me. And I would be uh, remiss in saying that you're not going to be emotionally invested you should be how to support me what what I could use for support ask questions ask questions of foster families that you know that are here in our body ask questions of myself you know what is your role how do you handle um, you know heartbreaking moments how will you give up a case how will you handle it if if abuse is part of your case I just think as a body as just regular people, we can do better with our words and we can do better with our actions. And so this is one of those ways that if you can't foster, you can support a foster family. If you can't support a foster family, you can be a CASA. If you can't be a CASA, you can go work at um, GAP or at More Than a Bed. If you can't do that, you could go work at the CASA Support Council of Pima County. We can lift people up and not tear down a system that's already torn down.